Friends, our Old Testament reading comes today from 1 Samuel 16. I want to invite you to turn with me in your Bible. So if you need to pause the video for a minute and go grab that and come back, I would invite you to do that. 1 Samuel is about a quarter of the way into uh, the Bible. And so we're going to read from 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 1 through 13. Let us read. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked at Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Aminadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shema pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all of your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. The word of God. Thanks be to God. that are going to watch it online. Okay, so our story today is about a prophet named Samuel. So this is Samuel. Say hi, Samuel. Hi, Samuel. And so Samuel, uh, there was a king of Israel, and his name was Saul, but he, God decided that he no longer wanted him to be the king. And so God sent Samuel to a man's house named Jesse to go and find another king. And so Samuel went and goes, hello. Are you Jesse? Yeah. Do you have any sons? Yeah. And so he starts to meet the sons to see if he might find a new king of Israel among Jesse's sons. Okay, you ready to meet the sons? Yeah. And so Jesse starts introducing him to the sons and he says, Oh boy, do I have sons for you. Let me introduce you to the best son I've got. This is Eliab. He is so tall. He's handsome. He has wings, not really, but he's so, uh, he is obviously would make such a good king. Do you think he'd make a good king, Ben? Yeah. And so Samuel says, listens to God, and God says, no, nope, Eliab is not going to be the king. I have somebody else in mind. God doesn't look at the things that people look at. God looks at the heart. So we have to put Eliab over here. Eliab, son of Jesse. 
also known as Buzz. So he says, hmm, I better meet some other sons. And so he says, I have this other son. He's very strong and mysterious. I think he would make a good king. And Samuel listens to God. And do you think God thinks this is the king? No. No, because God doesn't look at the things that people look at. He looks at the heart. And so he says, nope, this isn't the king. So he says, oh, I have another one. They're similar age. What about this one? Do you think that he's the king? He's very flexible and... Uh, light on his feet. Do you think he's the new king? No, and Samuel says, listens to God, and God says, no, he's not the new king. So this keeps happening. It happens four more times. He brings person after person. Is this going to be the guy? No. He's another Batman. God looks at the things that, doesn't look at the things people look at. God looks at the heart. What about this guy? Do you think it's this guy? No, I don't think it's this guy. Hmm, who else might it be? What about this one? Well, he is Harry Potter, so... Well, no. he is Harry Potter, but I don't think he's the new king of Israel. And so he goes inside and says, well, what about this one? Another Harry Potter? There? Well, no. No, this guy can't possibly be the king of Israel. So, Jesse, do you have any more sons? Yeah. One more son. Well, where is he? Over there! What's he doing? Guarding the sheep from getting away! Oh, you have a son that is a shepherd. Okay, well, we will all stand until he gets here. Go get him. You don't have to bring the sheep. Okay, bring him. And so the youngest son, that Jesse didn't even think needed to meet Samuel, comes and meets him, and he's the youngest. He's been a shepherd, and God says, yes, this is the one. This is David. This is going to be the new king of Israel, because God doesn't look at the things that people look at. God looks at the heart. And so Samuel anoints David, and he's going to become the new king of Israel. And I do you know why I love this story? Because I think it is such good news that God does not look at the things that people look at. God looks at the heart. Because there's not many of us that are the strongest or the smartest. We all have things about us that are, are incredible. But that God can use all of us. Just like he picked David, the youngest one of all of the brothers. Which is pretty good news, right? Can we say a repeat prayer? Yeah. Okay. Can you do party hat? Can you do rocket ships? Can you do praying hands? All right, let's say a repeat prayer. Dear God, Dear God we, love you. we love you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for, Thank you for looking, looking at our hearts, not what people look at. Amen. <laughs> Our gospel lesson today comes from the gospel according to John. I invite you to flip in your Bible uh, to John chapter 9. Uh, John is the fourth book in the New Testament, so pick it up kind of three-quarter way into the, into the Bible, and uh, you'll find the Gospel of John, chapter 9, uh, the whole chapter, 1 to 41. And feel free to pause this video and um, flip to the Gospel. Let us hear the word of the Lord. As he walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes saying to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. 
The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I don't know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? Then how does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is that he now sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So for the second time, they called the man who had been blind, and they said to him, give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I've told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born entirely in sins, and are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment so that those who do not see may see and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say we see, your sin remains. The word of God. Thanks be to God.